हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर मुनसिफा फिरदोस खान बरभुया आई हैव स्टार्टेड अ सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस ऑन क्लास नाइन कंप्यूटर साइंस दिस सीरीज इज प्रिपेयर्ड ऑन स्टूडेंट्स डिमांड इन दिस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन चैप्टर वन दैट इज बेसिक्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस वॉच द वीडियो टिल द एंड एवरी थैंक यू दिज आर द चैप्टर कंटेंट्स दैर इज इंट्रोडक्शन then need of computer education in today's world then what is a computer evolution of computers generation of computers uses and limitation of computers components of computer system examples of input output device hardware and software performance measurement of computer and data representation in this video i have explain till components of computer system because this video is becoming too long in order to make it short so i have uh, divided the video into two parts that is uh, part 1 that includes introduction uh, to com components of computer system in the next video i will come with the explanation of examples of input devices hardware and software performance measurements of computer and data representation introduction computer is the most versatile electronic machine man has ever created computers have made a great impact in our everyday life computers are transforming the way we communicate learn and work and so it is very essential for every person today to have basic knowledge of a computer system so accordingly in this chapter includes the basic knowledge of a computer system need of computer education in today's world now what does computer education means by computer education we mean learning basic knowledge about computers as well as acquiring skills to operate computers efficiently to perform better jobs today computers are used almost in every field and these are widely used in educational institution then government offices businesses banks hospitals railway stations airport entertainment defense transportation reservation for searching the internet for information and in many other fields so with the advancement of technology and wide use of computers the demand of computer literates is increasing every day so we can say that computer literacy is the need of the day to day so computer education is becoming an inseparable part of education so there are many clear advantages of being computer literate today we will discuss here some of them first is the computer education enhances creativity and thinking skills of students next computer education provides efficient and better use of technology most of the technology depends on computer systems so computer education helps to use technology efficiently next is the computer education provides more job opportunities it is very important to build up a strong career next computer education proves beneficial for better communication a significant part of communication in today's world is done remotely over computer networks to use the facilities of communication using a computer computer education is needed next computer education improves research skills and helps in communicating with different educational institutes so everybody should know how to use a computer system and the resources associated with it to improve their own research skills now suppose you are acquainted with computer knowledge so you want to take admission to a institute which is located uh, outside assam or uh, you know across india if you have basic computer knowledge what do you what you will do simply you will visit the website of that particular institute by visiting the website you will be able to see what is the admission status when they are taking admissions what is the admission fees what are the curriculum uh, that has been incorporated what is the how the uh, institute looks like every details is there in the website so in order to visit the website at least you should have the computer knowledge right so if you have the computer knowledge if 
if you have the basic idea of using the internet then definitely you will be able to see uh, any institute across india or all over the world and you can uh, basically see their website and you can accordingly if you wish to take the admission over there even in online also you take the admission so that's what computer education is required in order to communicate with other world next is the computer education helps in creating a better education environment to use the facility of smart classroom computer education is necessary now let me give you another practical example see you are seeing this you are watching this video right my video which is uh, streaming in youtube it's free it's free of course it's available now how you are able to access it definitely you have a basic computer knowledge you you have the knowledge of internet connection you know where is youtube how to search youtube how to search how to find videos in youtube and that's the way you uh, you find my video and you are able to access it and now you are uh, learning chapter 1 you are understanding the basics of things but how this happened because you have the basic knowledge of computer next is the computer education connects people to the online world so everything today is becoming online to use all the facilities of e sites computer education is required so again i am taking the example of my video since uh, you and i we don't know each other personally but uh, we are connected with each other with the help of this video so uh, we can say that computer education helps us to people to connect to the online world we have understood uh, what is the need of computer education and what are its benefits now let us understand what is a computer a computer is an electronic device that performs a function based on a given set of instruction and this given set of instruction is called a program now this programs enables computers to perform an extremely wide range of tasks that is computers cannot do anything without program how the computers works it accepts data it accepts data then it processes it process the data and that it produces the output now what does this data means data means raw facts that means let me take an example that students name then students roll number students marks these are all data these are all raw facts but when we combine all these row facts it together forms an information that means suppose roll number then name <coughs> then marks and we are preparing uh, name x y z suppose marks 50 to um, a b c marks 60 and so on so we are preparing a result sheet so this is the information and each record these are the row data these are raw data and all together this is the information so computer are used almost in every field and the usefulness of a computer is mainly due to the following advantages so we will discuss some advantages here first one is the speed that is computers can carry out millions of instructions millions of instructions millions of instructions per second speed of instruction is usually given in nanoseconds and picoseconds nanoseconds and picoseconds nanoseconds means 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 seconds picosecond means 1 into 10 to the power minus 12 seconds next is the computer accuracy computers works at a very high speed without losing accuracy it always gives the accurate results if we give the correct data and correct set of instruction then as an input then it will always give the <coughs> accurate output accurate output next is the diligence diligence means unlike we human beings computers do not get tired of performing repetitive task that means suppose if a task has been assigned to us and repeatedly uh, uh, it has been asking that we have to do the task repeatedly so definitely at the end of the day we are human beings we will get tired but computer it never gets tired does not 
get tired unlike human next is the storage capacity computers have the ability to store data and programs the data and program stores can be retrieved and used whenever required stores data and programs and this data and programs can be re retrieved whenever it is required next is the versatility that means computer can do different types of task efficiently different types of task efficiently so what are the advantages of computer first is the speed that is it can perform a set of instructions in a fraction of second next is the accuracy with the same speed uh, it gives the accurate data if we give the accurate input then next is the diligence that is with the same speed and accuracy it is able to perform repetitive task without ge uh, without getting tired next it, it can store large amount of information and uh, versatility that means it can perform different task efficiently so these are the advantages of computer the next topic is the evolution of computers the present computer system has evolved after centuries of efforts from different intellectuals who contributed through their works during different periods of time so let us take a look at the evolution of computer the evolution started from the 3500 bc when human being first started to learn to calculate with a calculating machine called abacus and the abacus was also called a counting frame counting frame which is a calculating device that was used in mesopotamia around 3500 bc an abacus consists of beads divided into two parts which are movable on the rods of the two parts this device permits the user to represent numbers by the position of beads on a rack that is simple calculation can be carried out rapidly and efficiently by positioning the beads appropriately so this is the simple example of an abacus which is shown in the figure so these are the beads that is shown so simply by positioning the beads simple calculation was used to be performed next is the napier bones So in the 17th century the Scottish mathematician Sir John Napier invented this manually operated calculating device So Napier's bones are numbered rods which can be used to perform multiplication of any number by a single digit number So this is the diagram this is the figure of Napier's bone you can see in the figure that this set is composed of 10 bones nine of which displays the multiplies of a given number between 1 and 9 so these are the 10 bones these are the 10 bones and each bone is divided into 10 squares and the 10th bone this this is known as the index which represents numbers 1 through 9 now the digits of the multiplication table is are split by these diagonal lines you can see these diagonal lines with the help of these diagonal lines the numbers are split now let me uh, show you an example suppose 1 into 0 it's 0 so they are showing it 0 by 0 uh, 2 into 2 4 so that means 0 4 like where you see 2 into 2 4 0 4 uh, let me take then this 7 7 into 2 14 this 14 so they are representing it 1 by 4 the diagonal way 9 into 9 81 so 8 1 so that's the way they have represented that's the napier's bone next is the pascal's adding machine this is one of the first semi automatic mechanical devices blaise pascal a french mathematician developed it in 1642 
so it was based on gear wheels with the digit 0 through 9 displayed around the circumference of each wheel so he designed the machine to add and subtract two numbers directly and to perform multiplication division through repeated additions or subtractions so this is the figure of pascal's adding machine where you can see these are the these are the wheels these are the wheels and in each wheels around the circumferences of each wheels 0 through 9 digits are represented and with the help of this wheels uh, he used to do this addition and subtraction addition and subtraction was used to be done and this multiplication division was used to be calculated with repeated addition repeated addition multiplication with repeated addition and division with repeated subtraction next is the Leibniz calculator Gottfried Leibniz a German mathematician improved an adding machine and constructed a machine called Leibniz machine in 1671 it was able to perform multiplication and division also the machine performed multiplication through repeated addition of numbers Leibniz machine used step cylinder each with nine teeth of varying lengths instead of wheels as was used by Pascal so this is the figure of Leibniz calculator next is the Jacquard's loom the Jacquard's loom is a mechanical loom invented by Joseph Jacquard first demonstrated in 1801 he manufactured punch cards and used to control the looms the entire control waving process was automatic the entire operation was under a program's control and the invention of these punch cards influenced the later advancement so this is the figure of Jacquard's loom next is the Babbage difference engine Charles Babbage an English mathematician developed a machine called difference engine in the year 1822 Charles Babbage is also known as the father of modern computer the difference engine was made to calculate various mathematical functions the machine was capable of evaluating polynomials using the method of difference so that's the figure of Babbage difference engine next is the analytical engine in 1833 Charles Babbage designed a machine analytical engine which was to become a real ancestor of the modern general purpose computer analytical engine was capable of performing all four arithmetic operations as well as comparison he included the concept of central process central process then storage area storage area memory and input output devices memory and input output devices in his design so that's the figure of analytical engine next is the Hollerith's machine in 1887 an American named Herman Hollerith invented the tabulating machine which was the first electromechanical calculating device he used punch cards for storing and processing information this machine was used by American Department of Census to compile their 1880 census data so that's the image of Hollerith's machine next is the 
Mark I. In 1943, American computer engineer devised the first electromechanical computer named Mark I. It was able to multiply two 10 digit numbers in five seconds. Mark I was the first machine which could perform two pre programmed in instructions automatically. It was the first operational general purpose computer. So that's the image of Mark I. Next topic is the generations of computers. Generation of computer refers to the different advancements of new computer technology. With each new generation of computers, the circuitry becomes smaller and more advanced than that used in the previous generation. So there are five definable generations of computers. So first one is the first generation. It started in 1939 and ended in 1954. The first generation computers used vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for storage. Size of these computers were very large, very large as the size of a room, size of a room, size of computer. The next, it was very expensive and used for scientific purpose. Expensive and used for scientific purpose. Some computers of this generations are given below. First one is the Atanasov Barry computer. It was the first electronic digital computer and it was a special purpose computer, special purpose computer designed to solve systems of linear e equations, linear equations to solve linear equations. Next is the ENIAC. It stands for electronic numerical integrator and computer. It was the first fully electronic general purpose computer. Electronic general purpose computer. Next is the ADSEC. It stands for electronic delay storage automatic calculator. It was slightly faster than ENIAC faster than ENIAC. Next is the ADVAC. It stands for Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Calculator. It could hold both a program and data in memory. Both program and data in memory. Next is the UNIVAC 1 that is universal automatic computer and it was the first commercially available computer first commercially available computer available computer Next is the second generation. The second generation was started in 1955 and ended in 1964. Second generation computers were manufactured using transistors instead of vacuum tubes. Transistors were high, highly reliable computer to tubes and due to the properties of transistors, the second generation computers were more powerful, more reliable, less expensive and smaller than the first generation computers. Magnetic disk and magnetic tapes were the main secondary storage in the second generation computers. While the first generation computers were programmed using machine language, the second generation computers moved towards symbolic or assembly language. High level languages like Fortran, COBOL, ALGOL and SNOWBALL were being developed. 
Examples of second generation computers include IBM 604, IBM 1401, IBM 1620, IBM 7094, CDC 11604, CDC 3600 and Univac 1108. Next is the third generation. It started in 1965 and ended in 1975. The third generation computers replace transistors with integrated circuits which is known as chip. The integrated chips drastically increase the speed and efficiency of computers. The third generation computers were more powerful, more reliable, relatively less expensive and faster. IBM's 360 series and 370 series computers are the example of third generation computers. Next is the fourth generation which started in 1976 and it's the current generation. The next advancement in computer technology was the microprocessor. The microprocessors launched the fourth generation computers. Semiconductor memories replaced magnetic core memories. IBM's personal computer and Apple Macintosh are the examples of fourth generation computers. This generation computers became more powerful, compact, reliable and affordable. The last is the fifth generation that is the present and beyond that is the current generation as well as the future one. The fifth generation computer was an initiative by Japan's Ministry of International Trade and Industry which began in 1982. These generation computers are based on the concept of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? It is a branch. Artificial intelligence is a emerging branch is an emerging branch in computer science emerging branch in computer science which interprets which interprets the means and methods the means and methods of making computers of making computers of making computers think like human beings human beings that means with the help of this technology computers can think like human beings so that's the artificial intelligence so this generation of computers are still in development. Next topic is the usage and limitations of computers. Today, computers are used almost everywhere. Some of the areas where computers are used are discussed here. First one is the education. Computers are used in education sector for taking online classes, for taking online classes, then online examination online examination referring ebooks referring ebooks then online tutoring etc teachers use computers to prepare lessons and students use computers to access internet, do projects and research works. Next is the home. Now computers are used at homes for several purposes like watching movies, watching movies, then online bill payment, bill payment, then playing games, playing games, internet access, social media access, etc.
Computers help to avail work from home facility for corporate employees also. Next is the medical field. Computers have become an important part in hospitals, labs and pharmacies. Computers are used to keep records of patients, records of patients and medicines. Computers are also used in diagnostic system and patient monitoring system. Next is the business. Almost in every business, use, uh, computers are used nowadays. And computers are used for maintaining staff records, staff records, then transaction processing, transaction processing, sales forecasting, then production planning, Then creating presentation and reports, etc. Creating presentation and reports, etc. Next is the government. Various government departments use computers to improve the quality and efficiency of their service. Computers are used to keep records on legislative actions, internal revenue service, etc. Next sector is the banking and finance. In the banking sectors, computers are used to store the details of the customer and conduct transaction. People can also use computer to access information on stock markets, trade markets and manage investments. Next is the communication. Computers are used to communicate through emails, then chat and video conferencing next is the entertainment computers are used to listen to music then watch movies online watch movies online then playing games computers are also used to create cartoons animations videos etc these are used in recording music too Next is the reservations. Computers are used for airline, railway and bus tickets reservations. People can book their tickets irrespective of their location. For example, a person in Guwahati may book a ticket from Kolkata to New Delhi. Next is the science and engineering. Computers with high performance are used for engineering purpose and to simulate dynamic process in science. Next is the military. Computers are largely used in defense. Computers are used in military communication, then missile control, military operation and planning, etc. Though it has usage, it has limitations too. The computer system does not have the power to make decisions on their own because they do not possess all the essentials of decision making. They can be programmed to take decision if a computer has not been programmed for a particular decision making situation it will not respond due to lack of wisdom and evolution faculties. That means a computer can do any task all that it requires is the right program to do it. Next is the components of computer systems. A computer basically performs five major operations first one is accepting data or instructions next processing data then storing data then displaying results and finally controlling and coordinating all operations inside a computer a computer system consists of a unit to perform each of the above functions that we have discussed. So this is the block diagram of a computer where, where the input unit is used for accepting data or instructions. The output unit displays the result. Then the secondary memory it's used for storing data and the processing data and controlling coordinating all operations is done by this CPU. 
input unit the input unit consists of input devices that are attached to the computer so examples of the input units are keyboard mouse scanner microphone etc these components help the users to enter data and commands into a computer system input unit converts data into computer understandable form that is in the binary code since a computer is an electronic device it can understand only in two stages either on or off or high or low voltages can be represented in in binary bits 0 or 1 0 for off off and 1 for on next is the output unit the output unit consists of the output devices attached to the computer these devices are needed to get output from the computer the most commonly used output devices are monitor and printer the output coming from the cpu is in the binary form that is either in 0 or 1 so it must be converted to human readable form before supplying the result to the outside world so this function of conversion is performed by the output unit next is the central processing unit that is cpu cpu is the brain of the computer system in a computer system all calculations and comparison are made inside the cpu and thus the cpu is responsible for activating and controlling the operations of other units of a computer system the cpu consists of three basic components first one is the arithmetic and logic unit that is alu alu does arithmetic calculations and take logical decision that is it performs all arithmetic operation arithmetic operations like arithmetic operations like plus <coughs> minus division multiplication and logical operations logical operations like less than greater than equals to less than equals to greater than equals to next is the control unit the control unit of a computer system manages and coordinates the operation of all the other components of the computer system that means it acts like our central nervous system it does not process but it controls it controls the entire processing entire processing of data inside computer inside computer next is the registers registers are high speed temporary storage area registers are used to quick accept accept then store and transfer data transfer data and instructions that are being used immediately by the cpu memory unit computer memory is the storage space in the computer the memory unit provides space for storing data and instruction space for intermediate results and also space for final results that means it provides states for a uh, space for data and instruction uh, space for intermediate results space for final results now let us understand the units used in memory first is the bit a bit is an elementary unit of memory it is the shortest form of binary digit binary digit a bit can be either 0 or 1 0 for off that is low voltage 
and one for on <coughs> that is high voltage data in computer are stored in the form of strings of zeros and ones next is the nibble a group of four bits <coughs> is called nibble next is the byte a group of eight bits is called byte next is the types of memory there are broadly two types of memories in computer system first is the internal memory or main memory or primary memory next is the external memory or auxiliary memory or secondary memory next is the primary memory all computers have internal memory to store programs and data while the computer is running so the primary storage area does the following operations it holds input data and instructions it holds data that is being processed and the processing instructions it holds intermediate results of processing it holds final results of processing the main memory of a computer is made up of two parts first is the random access memory that is ram and the next is the read only memory that is rom so first let us understand what is ram ram holds data programs and instructions for computer the cpu can access data directly from ram almost immediately the contents of ram can be accessed that is in any order and it is also called read write memory read write memory means that we can read from this memory and can also write on it ram is temporary or volatile volatile means that its contents are lost as soon as the power to the computer is switched off ram may be classified as dynamic and static that is static ram s ram and dynamic ram d ram next is the read only memory that is rom in rom information once stored remains fixed that is it cannot be changed so rom can only be read and used rom stores basic input output instructions to operate the computer rom allows only reading that is we cannot write on it rom is non volatile that is it contents are retained even when the power supply to the computer is switched off various types of roms are first one is prom that is programmable read only memory next is eprom that is erasable programmable read only memory and lastly is eeprom that is electrically erasable programmable read only memory next is secondary memory since the computer's primary memory is temporary secondary memory devices are used to store data and programs permanently for later use the secondary memory is non volatile primary memory has a limited storage capacity so secondary memory devices are used to store large amount of data there are various types of secondary storage devices this storage media can be broadly divided into two categories first is the magnetic media and next is the optical media magnetic media magnetic media is coated with a magnetic layer so some of the magnetic medias are classified as first is the floppy disk a floppy disk is a flexible disk with a magnetic coating on it these are one of the oldest type of portable storage devices that could store up to 1.44 mb of data next is the hard disk a hard disk is basically a set of disks known as platters each with its own read write head data is recorded on the surface of the disk magnetically next is the 
magnetic tapes magnetic tapes can hold a large amount of data these tapes are available in the form of cassettes reels and cartridges next is optical media in optical media information is stored and read by laser beam some of the categories of optical media are compact disc that is cd the cd have storage capacity of up to 700 mb there are three types of cds that is cd rom cd r and cd rw cd rom means cd read only memory read only memory then cd r means cd re recordable recordable then cd rw means cd rewritable next is the digital versatile disc that is dvd dvd can store six times more data than cds the three types of dvds are dvd rom that is dvd dvd read only memory read only memory then dvd r that is dvd recordable recordable then dvd rw that is dvd rewritable rewritable next is the blu ray disc it is similar to a cd or dvd but can store up to 17 gb of data and next is the solid state some example of solid stage storage devices are pen drive then memory stick and smart card thank you everyone for watching till the end like share and subscribe my channel in my next video i will provide the remaining topics of chapter 1 i will provide the chapter explanation so subscribe the channel to get updated thank you